A very very gracious welcome to the enlightened youth of this country. Me Anam Ahmed from the platform of Pensbox Education. I want to welcome you to the Hindu newspaper analysis. Today is 31st August 2018. So what are we waiting for? Here we go. So I have this brief little information about who I am, where do I come from. So I've done my graduation and master's degree in psychology from Delhi University. I have all kind of experiences uh, uh, offline and online in teaching. I have also been a part of Vajiram and Ravi's initiative for psychology have also made a full-fledged course at www.studyiq.com for people who are willing to opt psychology as their optional subject to write the UPSC mains and also other state services mains and also genuine people are invited who have this innate quest for knowledge and then you are required to check the links down in the description below and have a look at the beautiful course that I've made for you all so this will remain the pattern of our discussions starting with an amazing inspiring quote and ending on a map practice question so let us see what do we have here for us today self-discipline begins with the mastery of your thoughts if you don't control what you think you can't actually control what you do this is very true very genuine very basic and very fundamental in life actually that if you are actually building up a self-discipline um, concept for you if you're like um, about to start that manual of work or maintain a diary that from now on <laughs> i am going to like channelize my lifestyles and i want to be a human being and just tear away the animal skin that i have right now on me and i just want that disciplined life like an army personnel and then I don't want the bad habits to keep on hunting me so the first step which you are required to take in that direction that you have actually picked up for yourself and that is to actually keep a tap upon your thinking processes which are which is there in your conscious uh, mind i mean the the conscious thinking is something which you have control upon and uh, when you have like full on uh, control on this uh, conscious thinking your unconscious thinking will automatically get uh, in place um, and uh, according to your needs and requirement so uh, if you are like all always you are thinking uh, about uh, pessimism that I won't be able to do it or this is not something which is about me or um, this is just too much for me and uh, I'm not the one who's actually capable of doing all of that so when you are like keep on thinking uh, about these stuff which are highly negative in nature you are actually bound to turn negative someday uh, to that extent that negative things will start happening to you because you'll start taking the negative decisions you'll start taking decisions which are according to that a negative self concept that you have of yours so yeah thinking process that too in your consciousness is very very much important for you to actually check upon the thoughts which are coming to you the images which are coming to you the the majority of the time that you are actually thinking about yourself or about your situation is is something which really needs the um, uh, the revision the um, i guess uh, being vigilant about so when to try changing your pessimism with a more about more of the out the optimism thing all right to look at life so this is how you're going to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon so that you never miss an update from us and also i want to thank you all for extending like great support subscribing to my channel or liking my videos or sharing it what all bit of work that you've been doing it i'm seriously very thankful to you and for people who haven't really subscribed to our channel yet so you are really 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 encouraged from my end and it's my humblest request to you to kindly kindly go and hit that red wala red colored sundar sub button and then you'll you'll be like subscribed to our channel without any payment and stuff and then also hit that bell icon so that whenever we are publishing new stuff here you get a notification in your window and you never miss an miss an update from us and here is the fb page which you are required to like links are all down in the description below and also i'm providing you uh, my fb uh, profile link and my instagram profile link which you are required to actually check and follow and i do need your support i do need followers there so that i can like do a lot of marketing and stuff i can um you know uh, use instagram as a platform and for that i really need a, a heavy number of followers so yeah i do need your support so kindly support me in this cause and i have a telegram group being made for you and i'll be using this uh, channel or the platform to 
um uh, to actually when i have to make some announcements or i have to um tell you something about uh, any information or any updates so yeah telegram is very important you are just required to download the app from your play store and just write at the rate pb education or follow the link again down and uh, down in the description below so you have couple of uh, editorials for us today the first one actually talks about uh, money 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 and it's all about money so uh, what about money when we had uh, actually witnessed demonetization in our country in 2016 november so banks were actually overloaded with the older notes of 501000 they were having that process of um, uh, processing the older notes and then creating a new ones so yeah banks were like on their toes working day and night to actually uh, bring back economy to its normal functioning so yeah we'll be picking one or two points out of this article what the article writer actually wants to like re call from that instance and also we'll be focusing upon uh, the i mean the pros and cons um, of the demonetization and what was the scenario after the demonetization actually took place this article actually talks about uh, some um, medical negligence which was actually done by some doctors i mean in india we had some uh, surgeries or some transplants and these transplants are actually uh, imported from uh, well very well developed nations like uh, usa or european nations because we do not have those instruments or like you have to get a knee transplant or a, or a spinal cord transplant or some some uh, kind of transplant and their their tools that you that you really need to do that transplant and stuff like that so india is not very much developed so we kind of like imp import a lot of uh, medical instruments from abroad whenever the the cases of transplant is actually considered so recently what happened is that um, a transplant had gone very much bad uh, in a patient surgery and that patient had to like pay a, a heavy um, cost for that um due to health also uh, i mean because of health also and because of the money as well so indian um, hospitals and doctors are actually filing a case against the company from which they had actually bought the, pro the bought the project uh, product from and that product uh, when we like we we were kind of uh, speculating about it so we found that the product which we had complaints about it is actually banned in united states of america so they had like really banned it there but then uh, they were like continuing their export to other countries without telling us the harmful conditions or the harmful effects or adverse effects that it can actually bring about after the surgery so yeah we are like fighting that case and everything so i mean the whole incident is not that much important with our examination point of view but yeah you should really understand the the compromise which which a human being is actually doing today um to environment or to health or to anything like that just for the money just for the development just for uh, your own uh, goods uh, your own goods and means you are like uh, trying to um, also sacrifice other person's life and other person's um, i would say health so yeah we have uh, been to, uh, we have climbed the, those stairs of unethical um i would say agenda or unethical level that uh, all of the humanity is actually getting compromised So the next article here talks about pride and foreign aid here UAE uh, when UAE got to know that the uh, that the uh, I mean Kerala is actually facing a lot of problem due to the re recent recurrent rain which the state had actually witnessed so they had extended support to India in terms of money or aid or in some in term of in terms of technology and on all of that so center had actually declined it very blatantly and they were like we do not want any support from the foreign nations and stuff like that we are very much self independent country and we are not poor don't consider us poor <laughs> so we had like taken it on our egos and we didn't like accept that aid from ua so article writer is actually uh, you know talking about certain points here so we'll be focusing a uh, little bit upon it as well here uh, the article writer is actually talking about shale gas and its extraction from a uh, harsh conditions uh, down below the earth how shale gas is actually extracted and what are we doing? doing to uh, uh, what are we doing actually to conduct researches on it and what is like uh, its importance in today's time and what all distribution um do we have of shale gas in the entire world so we'll be focusing upon this article as well and today is friday so we have this charcha ka vishay the charcha today is regarding the sports scenario in india i mean are we like um have are we have i mean did we like arrive to that point wherein we can say that it sports is actually a devil 
developed activity in the country and india is like very much developed when it comes to encouraging or promoting or picking up sports and our performance in various international events so yeah we do have opinions like someone says that yes we have like achieved that level someone is saying no we haven't achieved that level and and motharma is actually saying that uh, we are somewhere in middle and it's complicated to actually comment anything extreme about this phenomena so we'll be focusing few points out of this article as well and here the article is actually talking about a scenario in uttar pradesh uh, state of our country that few students were actually protesting against the state government which is headed by the bjp led um, Uh, chief minister called yogi uh, adityanath so they were like protesting against him because of his some of his policies regarding the education or student or university regulations so some students were actually not very much impressed with the state government so far so they were like uh, putting up black flags against the campaigns um, uh, which the yogi adityanath government were actually doing in the state or wherever they were passing by or in front of their offices so these students were like get uh, they were gathering and then they were uh, showing the black flags to the government and and a retaliatory um, reaction to that activity was that these people were put behind bars and they were more, they were actually harassed or they were beaten up they were they were uh, expelled out of the colleges and uh, what not so here article writer is again saying that freedom of expression free the, all the six um, uh, uh, i mean freedom uh, i mean fundamental rights that we have actually got under the article 19 the six uh, rights are are like Uh, those rights they are actually have i mean provided to us as gift uh, with the citizenship of this country so you have no right to take it away from us so whenever we are like peacefully um, getting assembled or we are um, you know um, speaking something against the government against the um, i mean the policies with which we are not very much satisfied and stuff like that so you are very much not allowed to behave or react to it like that because it is our fundamental right to form association to pro- test without taking up any arms and ammunition and without having the intention to physically harm someone so yeah i mean um, crack down on uh, freedom uh, speakers or um, leftist people or uh, the entire scenario of attacking journalist or media person or ngo workers whoever is like going against the government they are like uh, getting uh, behind the bars and the <laughs> jails are actually getting filled up with these people so like it it is high time that you stop doing all of that so the first article here talks about money 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 and only about money it's it's all about money don't you feel so so rbi uh, annual rep- uh, annual report for 2017 and 18 actually reveals right now here is that 90 percent of the currency notes were actually demonetized at midnight on november 8th 2016 wherein we got that shock 7th november we got that shock at 12 o'clock oh my god we do not really need the 500000 notes that we have in our good lucks and then we have to get it back to our parents or oh, please just get it converted and this was all the money uh, that we had in our piggy bank so far and then thousands and 10000 and 20000 rupees were like um it was collected by your parents and you never got them back so yeah i mean this is the plight which every indian is actually facing after 2016 and after that we are very much scared to keep loose uh, money in our wallets because you know you, you you never know what happens to it the very next day so yeah it really uh, was put forward in our country as a as a move to eradicate a lot of fake currency which our which our country was actually fa- facing fake currency issue was at its height and then we had the fake currency circulation cross border as well illegal money was actually being um, trafficked um, um, across the border to bangladesh or to nepal or to pakistan also also terrorism was getting to its uh, height and then uh, loose money was actually used cross border again to buy arms and ammunition and also to recruit uh, terrorist um, across the border and all of that because these uh, activities have to happen or 
not at the informal level so whenever we have lose money in the economy then only you can like promote such activities and also corruption was one such target of the government which um, uh, really was the like main front thing that we need to combat the heightened corruption which was uh, circle which was being uh, you know uh, being facilitated with the presence of lose money in the lose cash in the economy so we were like very much encouraging people to deposit their money into the bank so that we have a account we have accounted money and on that money you are required to pay taxes and do not actually encourage lose money in the cash but but in a country like india which is like still uh, on the path of development or getting developed it is still a developing nation so we have a lot of business organizations and uh, informal sector who are like completely 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 working on loose cash because day to day payments or whether it comes to the old uh, old older people or whether it comes to the poor people they are very much very much behind using these banking systems and they feel very much alienated from these new english medium banking systems and technology and all of that they they do not feel that much comfortable they would really feel comfortable like stockpiling their gaddis in their almiras or under their pillows and stuff like that but they do not really want to go to uh, formal sectors like banking sector so yeah i mean the entire economy and while we were like reeling under that uh, problem and that uh, situation the second shock that we got was of gst which was being passed and all the states had actually ratified and then full fledged system was being imposed so yeah a lot of business a lot of trade a lot of uh, informal activities small micro medium and small enterprises were like getting hit by it so it really took 3 uh, years to actually get back to normal functioning and now also we do have a problem of uh, 2000 notes ka chutta we do not really get it very much easily in the market and whenever you go to the atms you are likely to get 2000 notes coming out of it and then it it's really it's really difficult if you have to make a payment of 900 or 1100 then the person doesn't have change so yeah we do need notes of the lesser denomination and that is the best thing if you look at the western nations you you'll come across that the denomination is actually very less i mean they kind of <laughs> in their 50 euros they are like managing everything about their i mean their expenses and stuff like that so we have like 2000 5000 is something like that of of real currency or kuwaiti dollar and and stuff like that so yeah i mean it is of uh, a lot of problem whenever you have a huge note and you have to buy like a 100 rupees and you have 2000 rupees then the shopkeeper is also harassing you further please get some chutta sir we do not have it and we we are like tired of uh, maintaining the chuttas at our shops so the next article here talks about pride and foreign aid it is again we have taken on our egos on our nose big fat nose that we have because we are trying to compete with china we are trying to compete and we are trying to maintain that level that we have in the in the asia and we want to like um show cars our uh, image that we are very much you know developed and um, we are having the highest diaspora in the world wide and highest remittances and uh, trade and commerce is also very good and service sector is doing very nice and everything i mean what all image that we ab you understand that our leaders are actually approaching the international platforms that actually uh, sup, i mean uh, extending their support to poorer nation around like nepal or other nations around smaller oceanic regions um, oceanic island regions we are like trying to extend our support to them and when our state is actually getting hit by some rainfall or some flash floods or something like that we cannot really you know accept a fund or accept a help from the other person i mean across the border so uae because uh, uae um, is having a significant malayali population i mean people from south is actually going to yeah, i mean united arab emirates uae and this is your responsibility to locate it on the uh, world map where it is present it is a persian gulf country so uae um, and also tell me and i mean it is interesting for you to find out that what is the capital of uae i mean le- there are a lot of people who actually commit mistake when whenever they are being asked what is the capital of uae so do tell me down in the comment section as a part of your background analysis question what is the capital of united um, uh, united arab emirates 
and uh, now the entire scenario was when they had got to know that Kerala needs help and it really needed help. So they had extended support to India in terms of foreign aid or some technology. So to that, India had actually denied. And a uh, uh, lot of people are actually saying that this goes against the f- entire feeling of cooperative federalism because uh, Kerala state didn't really have a problem with that and they were really in need of fund. And they had been like um, time and again telling center for funds and everything thing which uh, the center had like given but not up to the level which Kerala really wanted so we had like um, the chief minister had uh, uh, created a platform or a portal for a relief fund and all that so a lot of Indians joined hands and then they started contributing to that fund and with that raise with that fund raise they made a lot of money and that is ha- that has been used in the rehabilitation of the state so uh, the entire scenario was this uh, when uh, the foreign country was very much keen to like help you and stuff like that so you should have like extended uh, um, appreciation or acceptance to that so when we had the tsunami uh, 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 i mean the, the the south the southern states were actually hit by a massive tsunami in 2004 and a lot of people lost their life to that a lot of villages were uprooted farms getting destroyed coastal regions getting destroyed so uh, during that uh, tenure as well we did not like accept foreign aid from someone because india is somewhat very much inward i mean if you look at post liberalization which our country witnessed in the 1991 um and before that when the globalization had not taken place at all in india we were very much closed economy we didn't want to trade with someone we didn't want someone's uh, involvement in our politics or our economic decisions and everything like that because we had like fear of foreign um, I would say interference in our country because Britishers had actually ruled our country for 200 or 250 years and we were very much very much uh, scared of any kind of uh, interference of other person or other other country in our in our own country so sense of pride was actually getting hindered and we were like um, we took it on our egos that we do not want it and poor people need uh, assistance and um, funds and all of that we are like very much on the path of development and we have enough money we can like take care of ourselves and uh, UAE was again the same thing that they were interested in um, the rehabilitation of Kerala because of the Malayai significant Malayai population in United uh, Arab Emirates in terms of uh, students or uh, wage workers or nurses I mean there are a lot of nurses in those hospitals working for for the country and significant working population you'll find from the southern part of our country to these Middle Eastern uh, I mean Middle Middle East or Western Asian countries and also the uh, I mean the entire move has been like associated to the foreign contribution regulation act that we had like cancelled recently wherein NGOs were allowed to take denominations from abroad they were allowed to take uh, the donations from abroad to running their NGOs and a lot of restrictions were actually imposed upon them that even if you are doing it you have to do it from a very channeled or approved channeled way and you are not very much free to take decisions like that and a lot of NGOs were actually shut down and termed as being corrupt because they were using these foreign money um, which was which was like coming in like black money or and stuff like that I mean all all those illegal activities that you can actually count on your fingertips that had been associated with these NGOs so we really really do not want foreign domination foreign involvement because when you like kind of give money to someone you you kind of buy that person that's what China has been doing so far with our neighbors as well that they have been buying the entire neighborhood I mean India's entire neighborhood has been like sold off it's all on sale to China whether it is Nepal or Pakistan or Bangladesh or Myanmar or Sri Lanka they are all under heavy debt to China and that's what they have been doing so we do not want a situation like that maybe that's why India is not very much encouraging things like that we do not want monetary so we want your wishes we want your uh, prayers we want your um, I mean uh, the messages that you write to us on Twitter but we do not want your money so that's the attitude that Indians have for now 
the shale gas challenge is the next article which is talking about the importance of shale gas and its and its exploration in today's time when uh, when we are actually uh, having that uh, paradigm shift to exploit the unconventional hydrocarbons and trying to look i mean trying to find out their utility in power production and uh, stuff like that so uh, i mean whenever we have to talk about the unconventional hydrocarbons to extract them it is like you need heavy heavy machinery and uh, very advanced science and technology because they are actually present under low permeable rocks i mean you have like hard bedrock under the soil and then underneath that which is like we're not very much permeable you cannot cut through that rock sheet and uh, go beneath that and where you have the shale gas present so it gets really difficult to actually uh, extract it out of that level that depth and which is also being obstructed due to the presence of the impermeable rock layers which makes the entire process very difficult so to actually extract the shale gas from that much of depth you need pressurized water chemicals and sand and also but i mean 5 to 9 million liters of water has to be used in the entire process so again this is of major concern if india is actually aiming to have a program like that so already we are having water shortages so uh, further to um, i mean conduct processes or procedures like that you do need heavy amount of water so that's how you need approval from environment impact assessment and we had like discussed pretty good articles recently even yesterday there was an article on it that these reports have been not made on real data and real measures and in i mean this is not a total report that you can actually rely upon they do not uh, encompass a lot of factors and issues which really needs importance which really needs your attention so shale gas uh, the presence of shale gas has actually been questionable because it is actually present very much in proximity to usable drinking water known as aquifers so whenever you are like um, uh, mixing up chemicals into waters and trying to bombard that hard rock layer and trying to extract that shale gas out of those trying to you know make that crack in the rocks so that the gas can come up so this is very much harmful to the aquifers which are present just nearby and this can lead to contamination of methane poisoning to the nearby groundwater level so you need to have that technology so that you can like uh, stop these mixing up of poison poison material poisoning agents and elements to nearby dr groundwater drinking as well drinking uh, uh, groundwater used for drinking as well and for irrigational purposes as well because we cannot really compromise uh, i mean one developmental activity and other um, activities uh, i mean which are correlational to it is just, it is very much bad or hazardous to environment or to your health we really cannot compromise is on that so yeah you do need the simultaneous checklist of all the hazards or of all the bad things of all the bad happenings that are actually a consequence of your exploration activities in the region so when we talk about shale gas of course upsc has asked a full fledged question in upsc 2016 prelims whether it was 2016 or 17 i'm not so sure but i guess it was 2016 2016 prelims um had this question from shale gas that uh, which are the river beds or which are the areas in india which are which are having the potential for shale gas extraction so yeah we do have the western part of india like gujarat or upper maharashtra portion and also on godavari and K krishna um, delta regions so you have like higher potential of uh, Uh, extraction of shale gas and also USA has a lot of reserves for shale gas shale gas and initially the exploration and extraction had started from United States of America only So the charge of vishe for today is that uh, has India actually achieved that level of development when it comes to the area of sports whether it comes to the activities uh, sports activities in terms of the psyche of the people the encouragement the infrastructure the facility the programs and the plans of the government and everything in totality have we like achieved all the targets when it comes to encouraging sports activities and um, and uh, sports activities 
opportunities and uh, career options um, sports career options in our country so the uh, this uh, man is actually accepting the entire um, i mean the entire statement that we have actually achieved that we have actually arrived on the sporting stage yes we have and when it comes to encouraging the children for that or the i mean he's saying that the atmosphere is quite positive in india now and we have uh, inculcated that faith uh, that if our children are actually um, taking up the sports uh, in which my child is actually good at so there are a lot of career prospects which the child can really um, you know indulge in or have endeavors in so uh, when it comes to um, some facts and figures that earlier whenever the sports person um, i mean took took to some sport they were not very much paid and uh, they had like post retirement issues because uh, there was no job security i mean till what age will you be playing cricket or um, hockey or kabaddi or uh, wrestling so after that what you're going to do so now uh, the government has actually uh, you know made these sports paid and they are actually paid well and uh, government makes sure that whenever they are retiring from their age so um, they can join some association or they can join a lot of organization and keep working in the field so that they keep on earning and do not go dead so the article writer is again um, advocating the fact that do not count the number of medals we are actually progressing on a very positive path and it is encouraging to see the current scenario in our country whether it whether it is any sport whether it is wrestling and participation of women has also been very much re- remarkable and we are doing great and we do not really have to count the number of medals for now it's like the environment is changing the entire scenario is changing in india whereas this person is saying that it is a very big no the the sports is actually not enjoying that that prestige that valor that level which it which it really deserves and there are a lot of administrative uh, loopholes and administrative drawbacks and there are still a lot of resources deficit that our country is having you imagine that whenever and whenever india is actually winning a gold in a sport and it is competing developed nations like usa russia or germany or france it is a very very big thing i i mean i feel that because of i mean um, you consider the plight of a sports person in our country first fight the first battle which the person actually um, has is with the parents the parents do not understand that career option the parents do not encourage because these things these activities are actually termed as being extra curricular activities not those activities which are to be picked up for your career which are not because there is a lot of focus upon the service sector that you need to join a service you need to do job 9 to 5 jobs and some organization or some mncs or join the government bis or pcs or stuff like that but not a cricketer i mean they would not be happy to see you as a cricketer because they are also not very much sure that how much of a growth that you can see in that and all of that all all of the dilemmas or issues that might be i mean that parents might be having so the first battle is with parents and when the parents understand now you have to um, you know play on the district level first then state level then national level then you are like qualified for the international national levels and all of that you have to um, you know compete and there is a lot of competition also the infrastructural problems are there because you must have seen the movie dangal you must have known that there is a lot of psychological pressures the issues then infrastructural problems there are no grounds um, i mean no good grounds for practice and no good coaches for you no good um, uh, i mean health i mean sports psychology in india is also not very much developed i mean we do have sports psychology just working abroad for the sportsmen for um uh you know giving them personal uh, training for mind strength or motivation or stress management and everything i mean whenever we talk about the complete infrastructural facility which has been provided to the western world to their sports person it is like no much of a comparison to india so yeah i mean when he says that so he does have a point i mean we do lack that infrastructure and policies and authorities and all of that this motharma is actually very much com- confused she is saying that it is complicated but yeah i would 
say that 80% India is just not ready till now and we do need encouragement, we do need further support, we do need further um, atmosphere in the country for sports and um, cricket or few uh, sports are actually being encouraged in India so far and we do need other sports to be encouraged and we do need the talent hunt to be taking place. Now this is your background analysis question to tell me that the scheme uh, Khelo India was actually uh, put forward by the government of India. So when was it actually introduced and implemented and what were like its uh, manifestos or I would say what were like its aim and objectives. So do tell me down in the comments section as a part of your background analysis question. So further we have a news coming from uh, the BIMSTEC summit which happened. So this summit is happening in Nepal, Kathmandu and then leaders are uh, having a meet there, summit there and India ha is having that central role to play. So India is actually very much keen uh, with respect to the connectivity. The, in, I mean India says that we have a lot of potential with respect to trade connectivity, economic connectivity, transport connectivity, digital connectivity, people to people connectivity when it comes to soft power and stuff like that. So um, I mean I guess we'll have we'll have I mean a flood of editorials after the summit so we'll be covering it in every aspect so yeah for now BIMSTEC summit has been happening in Kathmandu Nepal and the BIMSTEC nations are India Bangladesh Myanmar Sri Lanka Thailand Bhutan and Nepal so this is for you to remember and um, uh, there's there are a lot of talks on cross-border terrorism and drug trafficking human trafficking as well so let us see um, what further talks are actually happening and what all uh, what all are the points which which will be very much covered in the editorials yet to come and we also have a news coming from a northeastern state of arunachal pradesh that uh, we have a lot of man-made dams being built on brahmaputra river by china in the tibet region because tibet has been like captured or has been taken away by china and it has been a ter and it has it is now a territory of china so uh, china has built a lot of uh, uh, i mean uh, check dams or man-made dams or reservoirs on the Brahmaputra river when it is called Sangpo when it emerges out of its source in Tibet. So it has uh, it is releasing a lot of water because again because of a lot of rainfall or, or situations like that they are releasing heavy water which is to actually flood in a lot of rivers specifically Siang river uh, which is a tributary of Bangladesh uh, oh, sorry Bangladesh you, which is a tributary of Brahmaputra so you do need to you know keep a tap upon these smaller rivers or tributaries especially of northeastern states because they are very very much highly I mean of higher probability to be asked in MCQ form specifically and UP ha UPSC has been asking uh, about Brahmaputra rivers, river twice consecutively. I mean 2016 also we had a question, 2017 also we had a question on Brahmaputra river. So yeah, do um, um, have a list of all the left bank and right bank tributaries of Brahmaputra river. So for today the uh, vocabulary words for you amnesty and official pardon for people who have been convicted of political offences. So you you're like pardoning these people fiasco a complete failure especially a ludicrous or humiliating one paranoia it is actually a mental condition wherein you are in some of some delusion some dilemma some delusion some illusion of persecution or unwarranted jealousy or exaggerated self-importance you're like you are the only one who's important and you are always having a doubt on other people's intention and uh, you are very much skeptical about things and you are very much um, you know viewing other people in, in a lot of negative light that's that's wherein we say that you are suffering from paranoia succinct especially of something written or spoken briefly and clearly expressed excruciation uh, excruciatingly it, it uh, to an ex, uh, ex intensely painful degree innocuous not harmful or offenses for you uh, map practice question for the day uh, continent is asia country is syria you have to locate on a physical map of syria golan heights it is a disputed property disputed territory between between whom that is your again background analysis question to tell me there are wars being conducted on this area and it is a disputed territory between Syria and which country you have to tell me down in the description below 
लोकेट द बुहैरत अल असद लेक यूफ्रेट्स रिवर विच कंटिन्यूज टू इराक होम्स डेजर्ट एंड सीरियन डेजर्ट विच इज लाइक अ ट्रांस बॉर्डर रिवर ट्रांस बॉर्डर डेजर्ट इन द रीजन सिटीज डामस्कस इज इट्स कैपिटल एलेप्पो एंड होम्स question for you today is you have to these are the lakes uh, which are present uh, in different countries of asia you need to actually arrange them from north to south so kindly arrange that and tell me down in the description below as a part of your map practice question so towards the end i would say stay tuned to pencil box education for more videos and updates and do give this video a big thumbs up if you really like the way i deliver content to you and knowledge to you and please do help me encourage me please do help me gather more subscribers more viewers spread a word of awareness to other people who are also um, you know aiming to join the government aiming to give civil services or state services or ssc or any competitive exam because newspaper newspaper holds utmost importance in your preparation be it whatever exam you are aiming for so please do give this, this video a big thumbs up this is the only incentive only guru dakshana only encouragement that you can give to me and also subscribe to our channel please kindly and hit that bell icon so that you never miss that update from us and this is my email id that you can use to connect to me personally and also the comment section you can use effectively thanks a lot for being a patient listener do your background analysis questions daily be happy stay positive spread love that's the most important thing signing off from pencil box education jay hind and thank you for watching